Welcome to episode three of the Onwards YouTube channel. I'm now stood in our new showroom space and you can see that I've got the 4x4 Man TG project behind me. That's now finished and I'm going to be giving you a tour of that vehicle. In this episode you also get to see some of the prep work that went into this new showroom space and some of our plans, uh, our future plans for it and a first look at our next project which is a high capacity 4x4 Mercedes Sprinter overland vehicle. We're building that for a couple who currently live in Australia. They're moving back to the UK and then they're going to be taking that vehicle around the world. So really exciting project to, uh, to be starting uh, at the end of the year. Obviously approaching the end of the year, we kind of uh, get a bit reflective and, and look back at how 2022 has been for us. To be honest, it's been, it's been incredible. It's been a, a really exciting year, a challenging year, a busy year. And uh, yeah, we wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest with you. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for being part of the Onwards journey thus far, uh, for obviously watching these new YouTube uh, episodes, uh, for following our Instagram, for commenting, messaging us, um, visiting our website and obviously coming through and, uh, and seeing the workshop space. And also wanted to thank all of our customers for uh, all of the commissions uh, to build them their, their dream adventure vehicles. We look forward to seeing you all in 2023 and looking, uh, looking at what 2023 has, has in store for us. We've got some uh, big plans, so, uh, so watch this space. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a, a really great holiday period. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the new year. Cheers. Today I've got the trusty sewing machine out. I'm making a set of roll down blinds for the Man TGE build. The upholstery for the seating and the mattress we commission a company to make, but the roll down blinds I make in house, I really enjoy making them. They are super simple, they're just a rectangle of fabric with hems all the way around and then we add leather tie backs. And those are for the porthole window, the side pod windows and the cab area. The ones, uh, or the, the curtain for the cab, basically means that you can run a set of thermal blinds for the windscreen and the side windows, but you're not staring at that reflective material, so you're in a camper van, not a spaceship. But uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. So today is a really exciting day for us. For the past three years we've been occupying this relatively small workshop here in Cornwall and we basically outgrew it the day that we moved in and about two months ago the landlady for the unit next door got in contact with me and uh, 
offered us the lease. So we jumped at the opportunity. It's taken a little while to uh, to put the lease together and um, cross the uh, T's and dot the I's, as they say. Um, but I'd like to introduce you to our new workshop. So this space was occupied by a salary company for 12 years and uh, they were great neighbours for us for the last three years. Um, unfortunately those guys have, uh, have changed their business a little bit and they've decided to go purely online so now we have double the space. Um, literally just got the keys, very excited. We are hatching plans about how we're going to use the space, we've got some prep work to do, we've got some carpet to remove, we've got some stud walls to take down um, but in essence it gives us more than double the parking space and it gives us two more vehicle vehicle build bays um, and a new office area which means our existing mezzanine becomes pure storage so yeah i'm really excited really really excited it's taken a little while to, to uh, sort out all of the lease but uh yeah onwards officially has two workshops so watch this space hey doggy. Hey doggy. we're drinking to the workshop mate yeah you yeah, <laughs> that's stoked. <laughs> what do you reckon to it? It's hyped? Hyped. These are the aftermarket plastic wheel arch trims. They, um, they help to give the wheel arch a bit of a more of an aggressive look and, uh, and match aesthetically really well with these oversized tires. So uh, yeah, obviously this, this vehicle has had the, um, the sequel lift kit fitted. So uh, yeah, the whole thing is looking pretty awesome. We'll give you a, a, a full tour in a bit, but nice little finishing touches. We now have the big yellow 4x4 Sprinter in the workshop. Uh, you can see we've had a big old delivery of parts for this build. They're all on the, uh, the workbench here. They're ready to go upstairs onto the mezzanine to be stored until they're ready to be fitted. The first thing to do is to fit the extended custom aluminium fuel tank. And uh, Jake is currently prepping to take all of the diesel out of the current tank so that we can, uh, we can drop that down. So what you got there, mate? I think we're good to go. Yeah. Little 12 volt pump set up to hopefully drain all the diesel out of the tank. Give it a go, shall we? <laughs> so it's about half full. Yeah. Just makes about up. 40 kilos worth. Don't want to be dropping that on ourselves, I'm going So this is the extended custom aluminium fuel tank for the Sprinter. And you can see that it is a, uh, 
it's an incredible bit of kit. It's come from it's come from a company in France, and uh, the quality is phenomenal. But basically, it extends way way beyond the standard plastic fuel tank that comes with these sprinters, and means that the owners have uh, have have, ex have extended capacity. So uh, the fact that this is going to be uh, an impressive overland vehicle, and that they intend to take it all over the world means that this is a, a vital bit of kit and obviously they'll be they'll be carrying extra fuel in the form of jerry cans on board but uh yeah really really impressed with this uh with this bit of kit it's almost a shame to to have to put it underneath the vehicle because uh yeah the welding's really impressive and uh it's always lovely to see something that has had so much time and effort put into the design of it all the documentation, all the fitting instructions that come with this uh, are really impressive too. So yeah, hats off to the uh, to the company that that built this, and uh, yeah, we'll show you uh, we'll show you how you get it fitted to the vehicle. Is that the filler? I guess that's your like oh, anti siphon device. Yeah, stinking. It's a very cold December morning here in the workshop and we've just loaded up the elevating roof, side pods and spoiler uh, for this big yellow Mercedes Sprinter onto the T4 to take round to our our spray spray shop that we use, our local spray shop. Luckily it's only a, a, a short walk from the workshop but uh, the flatbed's really handy. So here we've got the elevating roof shell, the two side pods and the front spoiler for the Rymo elevating roof. So we've removed all the rubber trims and a lot of the hardware and we're just going to take it the short drive around the corner to the spray shop that we use. Yoo So you can see we're making good progress on the 4x4 Sprinter Overland vehicle. Jake's cutting out all of the apertures for the extension pods on the rear here, and then he's going to move on to the apertures for the windows. So, uh, yeah, it's a loud, busy day here. So we've got the elevating roof shell back from the painters. It's looking pretty epic in its gloss yellow. So we get that into the workshop and then that can uh, that can wait to be fitted. Okay, so I'm really excited to give you a closer look at the finished 4x4 Man TGE build. You can see that we've got it here behind me in the showroom. We've got all of the finished details complete. We've got the upholstery in and we've got all of the warm LED lighting on and it makes for a very inviting space. If you've been following the YouTube episodes thus far, you will have seen some of the behind the scenes of how this vehicle came together. In the coming weeks, we'll be handing over the keys to its new owner. For now, we're very happy to have it in the showroom and give you an insight into the adventure vehicles that we build here at Onwards. The first thing I want to show you is the elevating roof. This is a fantastic addition to this vehicle. Usually you have a small access hatch here, which allows you to climb up and into the roof area. What we've done is we've removed a larger portion of the roof, fitted a steel strengthening frame to the structure of the vehicle, and that allows you to have full standing height 
once the elevating bedboard is raised throughout this uh, floor space of this vehicle. So I'll show you that just with a, a, a small push, this elevating bedboard will go up. We continued all of the ash cladding uh, on the ceiling through onto the bedboard, and you might have seen that in the previous uh, episodes. It's got its own warm LED lights, and um, you can control those independently of the rest. So. Obviously the full roof space is, is lit up there and uh, yeah, it's an amazing feature. I really like the mechanics of this, uh, this bed as well. It's just a really nice feature just to give it a slight push and let the gas struts take over. This is the table in its main position. It's on the Lagoon table base, so it can be easily be swiveled out of the way. So we can move this over here. And what I can do is I can access the garage area and take out the folding ladder so that we can access the elevating roof space. So I lift up the mattress. We have a hatch here. I can lift up and grab the extending ladder. It's place it down here. And now it's easy to walk up and access the elevating bedboard. This is the rear L-shaped seating area that encompasses the folding traveling seat. So what I'll do is I'll remove the upholstery and show you how you fold up that seat. You firstly, you remove the backrest. Then we remove the seat base by pulling it off of the Velcro tabs. And what we have here are four slats that you can lift up and push to the back. And then we can open this door by pushing this brass latch. Here we have the rear traveling seat in its folded away position. And I'll show you how to lift this up into its traveling position. So firstly, we it forward then we raise it up so you can see that this is the rear traveling seat in its folded up position you can see how quick and easy it is to access it and to transform this l-shaped bench area into the traveling orientation another great thing about this seat is it can be removed entirely so i can access two thumb screws down at the bottom here undo those and lift the whole unit out. So if you just wanted to travel with two of you in the front, you know, if it's just a couple going away, then you can remove the seat and regain all of the storage space that this seat occupies. It's also got ISOFIX brackets on the, on the seat so you can use it for child seats as well. So yeah, ticks all the boxes and I'll show you how we fold it away. Down here on the floor, we have the custom marine Oroco flooring. Each of these pieces of timber have been individually fitted, and then all the joins are filled with a special marine corking. That's sanded back, and then the whole floor is oiled. And what you're left with is an absolutely stunning, hard-wearing, waterproof floor that complements the rest of the van perfectly. Behind the L-shaped seating area, we have the fixed main bed. We've added the two extension pods to the outside of the vehicle, which increases its overall width by 200 mil. This allows us to have a 1.9 meter long by 1.4 meter wide bed, which is suitable for two adults. And what we have is individual upholstered cushions inside of these extension pods. Each pod has a bonded pill shaped window with a sliding uh, portion and an incorporated fly screen too. We also have these custom roll down blinds uh, that we've made for each of the, the storage pockets. So they just have lever tie backs which pop off and then these roll down and they fix into place with those stainless snap fasteners. And then you've got complete privacy in the rear bed area. We've also got our portal, which is one of our sort of distinctive elements of our onwards builds with its own roll, roll down blind at the back here and obviously a Roco trim again. And you've got individual reading lights at the back here that can be manipulated into place. And each of these have USB chargers on them too. You've got a large storage pocket at the back here and then We've got uh, this high, high level shelf, which continues from the front of the van right the way through to the back. So really clean lines, really simple, lovely textures, uh, and uh, just an amazing place to, to lay down your head and, uh, and wake up in the morning and, uh, and see what, um, what the day has uh, in store for you. So this is the main switch panel in this vehicle. It is the beating heart of all of the systems that we fitted. 
What you have across the top is a number of brass toggle switches. Each of these control individual parts of the 12 volt DC system. The first one is an isolator for the water pump. It's a pressurized system, so you can choose to turn off that pump when you're not using the vehicle. You've got four separate switches which control different lights throughout the habitation space, so you can choose which way you want to dial in those lights. You know, for, for, for the evening, you can turn a couple of them off and just have a bit of mood lighting, or for when you're cooking, you can you know, fill the van with lights. The last one here is a switch to turn off the electronic solenoid uh, on the underslung LBG tank. So that's a safety feature uh, allowing you to travel on ferries or the channel tunnel and um, not have the gas flowing into the vehicle. We have the gauge for your water tank. We have the Victron BMV, which is your main way to monitor how much power you have left in your Victron lithium battery, how much charge you have coming in from your solar, from your Victron Orion DC-DC charger or via your MultiPlus charger. This is the level for the underslung LBG tank. So once you turn that on, it will give you a uh, gauge on how much gas you have in the tank. This is the digital controller for your Truma combi heater and boiler. So this controls your heated water, your blown air heating throughout the vehicle. So you've got various vents inside of the vehicle for that. Uh, you can also control the fuel source. So you can run that off of the underslung LBG or 240 AC uh, electric uh, or a combination of both. We also have a remote for the MultiPlus uh, inverter charger unit. Uh, so you can turn it on from here. You can put it onto the charger only setting. That piece of kit allows you to have 240 AC uh, when you're off grid. So it turns your 12 volt DC into 240 AC. We also have an infrared pickup for the Truma AC unit. And we've got a, a remote mounted uh, just on the side of the console there. This is a air conditioning unit, which is separate to the aircon um, underneath the bonnet of the vehicle. So inside of this vehicle, you know, if you're, if you're traveling in winter, you've got heating and hot water. If you're traveling in summer, you've got AC um, that runs out of various um, outlets throughout the vehicle too. So, you know, you can keep this space really cool if you find yourself traveling in some hot climates. So yeah, that's all of the systems. We'll move on to the garage area. I'll show you the main sort of storage area of the vehicle. We are now at the rear of the vehicle and you can see that this is the main garage area. We have a subfloor here under which most of the systems are housed. So you have your 80 litre main water tank, your 12 volt DC system, including your Victron smart lithium battery, your Truma AC unit and your Truma combi heater, along with most of the plumbing. You also have a storage uh, cubby here with some removable boards at the back, and that gives you access to all of your fuses, your isolators and all of your DC chargers, so your Victron Orion charger and your solar charger. We've got a storage pocket here you know, with the onwards badge at the back. Uh, all of this is constructed out of poplar plywood with a birch finish, so it's really lightweight um, but super strong. We've got the porthole window here and uh, we've also got the consumer unit which houses all of the RCDs and MCBs for the 240 AC side of things, so that's all your protection on the, uh, uh, on the electrical side. Lastly, I wanted to show you some of the external inlets and outlets here on the off side of the vehicle. So here we have the external shower. The vehicle comes with a shower head which clicks in place and you have the capacity to have a hot or cold shower outside. This is the filler for the underslung LPG tank. This is the exhaust for the Truma heater. This is the filler for the onboard water tank. And this is the socket for the three pin hookup. I hope you've enjoyed this third instalment of our YouTube series. It's been really great to show you around one of our finished vehicles. Make sure you leave us some feedback in the comments, like, subscribe to the channel. Of course, if you are looking for your very own adventure vehicle, then reach out to us via email or give us a call and I'll see you in 2023. Cheers.